Hey there guys, Eric Farrar, broker co-owner 1850 Realty here. Just want to do another happy hour video uh, inspired by our friend and broker Stephen Mead. And uh, today we're going to talk about agent phone calls and um, yeah, efficiency and why we decided we try to avoid calls a lot of the time. Um, our last office listing that closed had zero, zero phone calls until it closed when the agent had called to say, hey, thanks for being easy to work with. It was a great transaction. We got everything conveyed, not a single problem. We had some text emails. It was nice, it was very pleasant. So today I just wanted to do a short rundown on why we try not to take phone calls. Um, and this all came about, we, a couple of years ago, we had a listing, a lot listing near our office and um, there was a lot to convey about this particular property and it was typically easier, um, you know, just to have a quick call to say these are some of the issues. Um, I was trying to get emails so I could email PDFs that would corroborate all this stuff just to make it super easy and let the buyers on that side know they could have data in their hand before they wrote an offer. Um, so I took a call on that particular listing and by about the eight minute mark, uh, the agent was really having a conversation with themselves while they were reading some of the information online. And I had to ask, I said, you know, I really, if you don't have any questions for me, I've got to go, I've got other things to do. And the person kind of thought out loud yet again, like, oh, wait, you mean you're not going to be on the phone for 10 minutes while I talk to myself about this? No, we don't do that. So today's four main reasons and 99% of our calls have these four topics. Um, reason number one, they want to ask about information we've already put out there on purpose. <laughs> information in the MLS. Um, how many bedrooms is it? How big is the lot? You know, this, this simple stuff. Um, you know, they're calling our phone number from that resource where that information actually is. So could you imagine in your business if you had something, someone's looking at your actual information to get your number to contact you and they didn't read it? It's kind of frustrating. Um, one of the biggest ones we get all the time, number two, is what price will the seller take? People keep asking this, it must be working, but uh, we have a fiduciary duty to our clients and that's information we literally can't give out, both <laughs> ethically and legally. Um, but people keep asking time and time and time again. And so, you know, if you wanna see what the seller will take, Put it in. Put it in writing. Write an offer. We'll we'll present it and um, see where they want to take it. Number three. Number three is another big one. People want to ask about disclosures prior to even writing an offer. And in our area, it's not common practice to give disclosures out ahead of time. Um, we've never had disclosures in of themselves derail a deal. Not one time. Not on the worst property. Um, just now haven't seen it, but there are other parts of California where that's very common practice, where you typically get all the disclosures prior, um, so you can start removing contingencies ahead of time, which is expected in super hot competitive markets like in the Bay Area. And number four is to ask about number four <laughs> buyer diligence. You know, we when someone's selling a property in California, we the seller and we we cannot do diligence for a buyer. You know, we have one. Um, the unit, it's a condominium unit and it does not have a washer and dryer and it has a community one that's included in the HOA. And we've been asked multiple times by people inquiring, can the seller find out if I can put a washer and dryer in? No, no, the seller can't find out. They're, they're selling the property. They're not interested in doing research and heaven forbid they get some information that's incorrect. They can be sued for providing poor or bad information. And a bonus, bonus number five, is are there any offers? And this is a good question to ask because sometimes you need to know is, are we in a super competitive state? And nine out of 10 agents ask if we have offers, if we have offers or an offer in hand, the buyer isn't serious enough to write. If we say we don't have offers, the buyer also isn't serious enough to write often when this question's asked. So it's um, 
one of those things that <laughs> we've gone in a circle over and over and it just keeps coming up and I, I don't know why because we, we put together and close deals for our clients all the time without having asked these questions or even have calls about it or at all in the entire transaction. Um, concise communication is key and text we feel is the best way to do that. There are obviously times when there can be challenges that need to be put together and you know a quick five minute call because you might not want the back and forth of an email exchange taking all day if there's something that needs that's time is of the essence. All right guys there's another real estate happy hour with Eric Farrar broker co-owner 1850 Realty. Let us know if you have any questions we're always here to help.